Welcome to Bowser Training Lead Code Video Solution. Um, so if you want the best mock interview experience in, uh, in the state, in North America, so feel free to check us out at bowsertraining.org. Um, and also if you would like to uh, subscribe our WeChat account, feel free to do so, where you could receive constant updates regarding tech interviews and uh, lots of other things. Okay. So today we're going to talk about lead code problem 200, which is number of islands. So essentially this problem is giving you a, uh, a two-dimensional array um, where one represents a island, an island, and zero represents water. So giving you this matrix, you can find uh, basically how many number of islands are there. So this is not a hard problem. Essentially this is just like a, a you could solve it in either a uh, BFS fashion or DFS fashion. Breadth first, breadth first the search, uh, breadth search first, or depth first search. Depth, depth search first, sorry. <coughs> so basically, um, uh, you could start from whenever you find the first length, and then you just keep expanding until you couldn't find any. So in this expanding fashion, you could have two, fa two ways, right? So DFS and BFS, like we just talked. And, uh, um, that's pretty much about it. So regarding this problem, a very similar problem you might be asked is like, hey, I give you my phone contacts, right? So you know all those people, who knows who, and then I want you basically to, with, with my phone contacts, give me the sub, how many subgroups that um, within this subgroup, everyone knows each other, while the other groups, um, everyone also knows each other, but between these two groups, people don't know each other. So basically that's, uh, like find the strongly com uh, connect the components within a uh, directed or undirected graph is very similar. You can think about it. Um, okay, so let's take a look uh, how we're gonna solve this problem using both DFS and uh, BFS. So let me try BF, uh, DFS first, okay? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Just like any other problems, we should uh, validate the uh, the input. Um, okay. Um, a general rule of thumb, a rule of thumb regarding um, basically writing functions like you don't want really want to change the input so to avoid some uh, you know surprises for, for other programs when they use your method so here so what I'm going to do is I will because you want to take a uh, map or a lookup table to to see whether or no this is visited or not during your BFS or DFS right so instead of just changing the original grid like here so we will just have a lookup table called Visited. And then we'll basically traverse this matrix and then doing DFS. Basically, I'll just uh, explore.
after I explore, this is basically the, the explore is my DFS helper function. So after I do this, that means I already expand all the connected components. Now my number of islands should increase. Should I whether explore the island or not? Because there will be some boundary issues, and there whether you want to explore has been explored or not, right? And if I need to explore, so I want to go basically. Through uh, four directions, up, right, down, and left, right? So, in order to make things easier, I will just define a So basically, I'm doing uh, right, going down, going left, and going up. Let's four directions. Never you visited in this mode up to this point. So you just basically keep exploring four directions. By having those helper methods, it's just like in real interviews if I run out of time. So the interviewee, the interviewer will understand uh, what this method is doing, so I don't have time there. Time to write this smaller method which should be fine. Let's take a quick look. So my directions, group of check validation, it is now, so nothing, get a row column. So I got my map, and then basically I look through the matrix. So I keep a DFS fashion, and uh, if I should not explore, or it's being explored, go, or explore this, and then four directions. Let's see what happens. I think it looks correct. So when the input is empty, I return minus one empty because grid length is equal to zero. So expecting zero. Well, um, 
So when the input is one element, so my output is there's nothing. Oh, look at this. So if, in, if it is a if it is a, a, a water, I want to continue. If it is already visited, right? So I want to continue, or else I don't want to continue. So, but okay. Now it's accepted. So regarding time complexity, this will be um, because each node is visited once and only once. So this this will be O m times n, which is you could say it's O n square. And uh, regarding space complexity, it's uh, because I uh, allocated this visited, so I still use the O n square space. Unless what you want to do is you change the original, which I don't think it's recommended in real world programming. You could explain this to your uh, to the uh, interviewer. Okay, so this is the let me save this. So this is the BFS solution. So let's take a quick look at how we're gonna solve this in a BFS way. So as we all know, if if you want to solve a problem in a in a uh, BFS way, Q is your friend. So how am I going to change this to? to a queue-based structure. So basically, I should still explore. So this function should stay the same. And now, in my explore function, um, it's not going to should not explore. This should still stay the same. So it's essentially just like this. Instead of recursion, here, I should have a queue. Um, because I don't think Java has a, like a native support for pair or key value pair. So what we're gonna do here is um, as a small class called block here. Just make things easy. Shouldn't really do as public, but. Generate all the getters and setters. Something like this. Here, I should explore this guy. Explore four different directions. So I got this, and then um, should I explore this or not to add it to the queue? So if this dot should explore my x, y, y, column, grade, width. So this would 
this is why it's not always handy to have functions. Whenever you get this, so you would just get a queue and when you are doing the explore exploration, and then while this queue is not empty, you put it out, so you put all the neighbors in this in the queue. So basically like a DFS fashion of four directions, and then just keep expanding like that. So after this exploration is done, so your you should keep your result there. One quick problem here is you explore this, you alter this, and then this should be marked as true as well. Okay, let's see. I think it looks correct. Let's call it X. Um, so I do pass so this is the X. X1, X2 is not good, but it doesn't really matter. So in order to pass it, let's just do this. I would rather call it new. All right, so basically this is nothing fancy. All you need is basically a queue to help you. And uh, the complexity still stays the same. You still need a uh, ON uh, square complexity because you still, every node is visited once and only once. And you still need ON square space because we still have the visited map. Um, okay, thank you for watching.